about the Z06 that I didn't buy. Now, it's not clickbait. I did post a thumbnail up in my community posting, a uh, picture of the car, as it would be, and I ended up taking it down out of respect for the owner who's still trying to sell it. Uh, I'm not trying to put the guy on blast or anything. He's a nice guy, and I think it was a really, really crazy fluke of a problem, but it did put into question the quality of the car, uh, in my head at least. In the meantime, when I'm talking about it, we're gonna be changing the oil on the Trans Am here. As always, I'll be using Mobile One Synthetic. Uh, this time I'm going to use an AC Delco oil filter. I prefer Wix, but AutoZones don't carry them. Also got a couple of front turn signal housing bulbs. The front driver's side is burnt out. After looking back at some of the footage, I didn't realize it of uh, when I back it out here. So first things first, I'll start talking about the car a little bit. I'll tell you the crazy story of why I didn't buy it. It's, it's really like a one in a million problem to have. But uh, it ended up being a deal breaker for me. So you'll see the car when it's up on jack stands, and I'm telling you a little bit more about the Z06 I didn't buy. It'll be alright under there. Um, yeah, so the problem was very strange. About 24 hours leading up to the uh, buying of the car itself, actually, you ended up thinking that the alternator went out on it, which is odd but plausible. So, small setback, no change in price, he's just going to fix it and make it right, and that's all cool. And he's just going to fix it real quick and things should be okay. You know, as we're, we're driving down, getting closer and closer and closer, the guy uh, said he bought a remanufactured alternator, which is what I would do, so no surprise I didn't want a brand new one. We were just hoping to kind of have a uh, remanufactured one or at least have an operational car. He gets a new one installed, bought it from an O'Reilly's, so nothing, nothing uncommon here. Bad timing. When I bought the WS6, the power steering high pressure line let go the night before I was going to buy it, so that stuff happens. It always happens at the worst possible time. So a little setback aside. We stop and have dinner, me and uh, my girlfriend and my friend that came with, and uh, we're done, ready to meet, and uh, he ends up starting the car, and it's making some horrific noise, and I don't really know what's happening, I haven't got pictures, and he thinks he got a new, bad, me, he got a new, bad, remanufactured alternator, so the odds of having a bad one are not good the day before, then getting a bad new one are even worse, so we're like, okay, well that's really weird, he said it's making a real bad noise, like there's bad bearings in it, um, he just says it's junk and we're going to have to meet him at a parts store or meet at his house. It's a little bit confusing on what's going on at this point because we're out of town. We're following this dude all over the cities. He ends up buying a second alternator within a day. We follow him back to his house with it. car looks really nice in person. Uh, it's everything as descriptive. Uh, the tips are a little bit crooked. That's all that's really wrong with it, which is kind of expected. I fought with my Corsa exhaust on my Corvette. And uh, yeah, all is good. I'm not going to put any footage of the car in the video out of respect for where he lives and his privacy and everything, so I'm not putting anything that will pick out his car exactly. And if you figure it out, good for you. But as far as I go, I'm not trying to single leg out because I think he's being honest. I just, it wasn't the right car for me after all this. So we get to his house, put the second alternator in. Everything's looking good. He knows how to turn wrenches. I'm helping him put the pulleys on and everything. I'm helping him string the belt on and everything, so I'm not really jumping in. Um, it's kind of his deal. He's working on it. It's his car. So I'm just watching me and my buddy that came with. He's a big car guy too. So thanks Eric for coming with. I really appreciate it. So yeah, everything's all buttoned up on the engine. We're going to loop the serpentine belt around the, uh, the crank pulley. And I noticed that the crank pulley is moving like it's spinning. I was like, hey man, that <laughs> the crank pulley is spinning. You know, obviously the car's in park. It's in gear. Parking brake on and everything. So there's, there's no way that crank pulley should be spinning. And he goes, no, it's not. There's no way it's spinning. It's in park, which would be true, you know. So he he denied it immediately, which is totally fair because it makes no sense. And uh, anyways, go start the car up after we get the belt strung on. And all of a sudden, it's making the most atrocious noise I've ever heard in my life after a couple seconds of running like it did before. It sounds like marbles in a blender. I mean, it, it was 
the most cringy noise I'd ever heard. I wish I would have filmed it. It would have been painful to listen to. It was, it was bad, man. I'm really telling you it's bad. So i am got my flashlight out. I'm kind of looking around for a second or two while it's running. I was ready to watch the drive system and the harmonic bouncer fell off. It was, it was banging against the steering rack. So I went and shut off the car like immediately and he shuts it off and we look at it real quick. And uh, yeah, sure enough, there's an ARP crank bolt in it. That bolt backed out so far that it was only finger tight and the crank pulley, you could just wiggle it around. It was, it was off the crank snout. So that's pretty much the reason I didn't buy it. It's a hand-built engine, you know, so if that's wrong, you never know what else is wrong. The crank snout got beat up. The engine block and the flange that the oil pan connects to on the front of the block, that would be behind the crank pulley if you can picture it, I guess. Uh, I'll actually put a couple pictures in. It's not giving anything about the personal way. So there's a couple pictures of it. Um, gouged a little bit of a, chewed a little bit of a gouge into the block, which is, isn't probably obviously going to hurt anything, but at that point, that happened. It's bad luck. There's only 3,000 miles on the build and I'm just gonna walk away from that one. The price was good, but it's not so good that it was irresistible. So after a day or two of talking, uh, it's still not fixed, it's going on a week now, and um, yeah, I'm sure you lost a little bit of wood over selling it, and rightfully so, so that, that really sucks for the owner. It's good you know, in the end for me, I didn't buy it, and it didn't happen on the way home, which it was a ticking time bomb, obviously. It could have happened a block away from his house. So again, try to make it super clear, I really, really 100% don't think that this guy was trying to screw me or anything. I mean, if he set me up to come and look at it, the, the car was undrivable. You know, there'd be, you wouldn't gain anything. you just waste somebody's time, you know. Like, you, sh you should know if you're watching the video, there's no serpentine drive. The car's not charging. There's no water pump. I mean, there's, there's nothing. No power steering. It's, it literally wouldn't move. And with the sound it was making, you, you wouldn't even want to listen to it run. So, freak accident, but I dodged a bullet by, like, uh, hair, you know, it's just unbelievable that it worked out like that. So sucks for the guy, like I said, but uh, I think he'll make it right. He'll put it back together. He'll sell it, and it'll probably be fine for whoever buys it. So, anyways, <coughs> we got the oil change all done on the Trans Am, and uh, we'll go for a little bit of a drive now, kind of shake it out. There's a little bit of condensation from when I just started. It's been clearing up slowly. You'll have to believe me. That spot's right there, though. That's a leak. So I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. I'll have to go into the car and see where that might be coming from. I think it's power steering. A little bit of inspection rendered results, and I think my power steering cooler line, the power steering portion of it, comes up right over there, if you can see it. We'll go into the car. I think it's leaking. I had a little drop. Let's see. Can you see that? There's a drop right here. There's a drop right there. That line... <laughs> Sorry, I'm making you dizzy. That whole line is wet all the way up to the top and it's power steering fluid. So up there, uh, up there real high. I'm thinking around there I've got a leak. Very common for them to leak, so I think the next best thing to do here in one of the next videos, we'll do a power steering cooler delete. Historically, these have the tendency to fail and they will mix power steering fluid and coolant. It's not good. If I'm not mistaken, you can get a non-power steering cooler optioned upper radiator hose. Sorry, it's kind of a mouthful. You get that and it just replaces that whole section with a continuous rubber hose. My 98 Z28 had a solid one, I believe. Could be wrong. Uh, I'm going completely off of memory here. Uh, I know the cars fairly well, but I'm not the encyclopedia, so please forgive me if I'm wrong about that. But I believe a 98 Z28 hose would fit that and not have a power steering and not have the power steering cooler uh, in that particular model, so it's just a continuous rubber hose. And uh, I don't know if we just end up looping the cooler. I'll have to look into that, so more to come on that. And uh, otherwise, looks like it's pretty much ready to go. There's a little bit of a vibration in the rear end. I can't tell if it's like a control arm or the exhaust or anything, but I was just reaching around under there and everything feels pretty good, so I couldn't really tell you what it is off the top of my head. So I have to drive a little bit more and then listen to it while it's idling to uh, get a little bit better idea of what's going on with it. But 
so far it's been pretty reliable. I'm starting to ride on a little bit harder and uh, I'll put in this footage. Last summer I actually money shifted it on accident. I went from first to second to first. Alright, so here we are. Do a first, second gear pull. A little bit of a roll here. And uh, held up, spun the motor really hard, but man, I thought I broke something for sure. All kinds of driveline noise and jarring. It was like nightmarish. That was the worst thing I've ever done in a car. So apparently there's an MGW shifter in there. It's got the factory Hearst knob on it. So I don't know that there is. At least the owner didn't get an aftermarket knob. It's not a flat stick because it's not exposed. So maybe it's an MGW short shifter. Kind of hard to tell. But last thing I'm going to talk about is that's how dirty the car is. That's on everything. It's hard to pick it up in, in video, but I did get a clay bar kit here. Got a clay bar kit, so I'm gonna wash it, clay bar it, and kind of get it set up right for the summer. level when it's on the ground so it's nice and level so I'm sure you're freaked out a little bit think I'm gonna check it now but we'll get it uh, back down on the ground before I do that I do have to change this turn signal bulb right there it either fell out of the hut it either fell out of the housing or it burnt out one or the other I think they're LED bulbs that are in there could be wrong but this one's still working I'm gonna replace them both it's good practice so a couple of 10 millimeter bolts we'll drop the trap doors under here right there and I'll reach up, stop it real quick, and we should be up and running. If you don't do this, make sure you use a little bit of this uh, bulb grease, wherever it is. Always put that in there. So upon further inspection, this socket is actually burnt out. I put the bulb back in, it is an LED bulb. Very common problem on this era GM car or truck. These things get hot, I'm telling you. So, I don't feel that it's, yeah, it has been replaced once. There's some butt splices. So it's been burnt out once, burnt out twice. I'm trying to get her a third time here. So I'll get the bulb back in there. I'm sure the bulb is fine. It was just loose um, and we'll roll with it for a little while. I'll get a couple of these coming. I'll place the other side, obviously. We'll solder those in, try and do it a little bit better. Put the dielectric grease in. Hopefully it'll last this time with an LED bulb in there. I think the problem is those sockets do get extremely hot from being on constantly when the car is running, so it's more prevalent in trucks. Um, these cars seem to run less long periods of time, so I'm a little bit surprised that this car in particular had that burnt so bad. So, we'll save these for another day. I just can't let you go Lord knows that I've tried to You said I was the only one No one likes being like to You made this mess and left me with the pieces So as suspected with the car back on the ground, the oil was a little bit low. Uh, I ended up putting probably three quarters of another quart in here. That's done drying now. So, check it again, and then we're gonna go for a ride.
So as you can see, we made it back to the garage in one piece. I can't quite tell where it's coming from, but when you put the car in reverse and you start rolling backwards with the clutch engaged or disengaged, the brakes on or off, doesn't matter. Uh, I got a rattle, so I don't know if it's coming from the exhaust bouncing off of something or if the muffler came apart or what the deal is. Before I left, I actually peeled off the rear wheels, check, checked all my calipers and caliper brackets to make sure that that stuff is good and tight because I did touch all that recently and everything was super tight. Lower control arms, the brackets, pan hard bar, the new bumper, everything's good. I couldn't make the exhaust rattle. I can't tell where it's coming from, so if you have any idea or suggestions, drop a comment down below. Looking for a little bit of help on this one. I'm going to have to get this thing up all the way in the air and start really digging through it. It's not the end of the world because the car does need a transmission fluid change too. So, so that'll be just as good of a reason as any to get the car up in the air and do that and hopefully find that little noise. It's super annoying. I don't think it's a gear in the transmission. I don't think it's the reverse gear. It does it in neutral, first, reverse, whatever, rolling backwards or forwards really slow it does it. I don't think it's the differential. Makes no noise on the highway. It's perfectly fine once you're rolling. So hopefully that's not what it is, but I'm doubting it. I'm thinking something's rattling in here. So that's going to do it for today's video. So if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I'll have more content up regularly now that it's summer. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks for being part of everybody that watches the videos. Hearing your comments and stuff is really nice. It kind of keeps me going. If you're new to the channel, maybe, subs maybe subscribe and come back for more content. And yeah, hope I keep making content that you enjoy. The hunt for the Z06 continues. You got an idea of what I'm looking for now. So the cat's kind of out of the bag, but that C6 Z06 is really the best bang for the buck value. I think it's the last true Corvette sports car, as it would be. So that's really what I want. It's the most reasonable. If I hit the lottery, I'm going to get a ZR1, but I don't think it's going to happen right now. I've got other stuff going on that I need to use some of my money for. So it's going to be a C6 Z06. Hopefully the right one comes along. Uh, till it does, I guess we'll see you next time.